How's it going, guys? It is 1.54 a.m., 22nd of March, Wednesday here in Japan. We have a past level question for gastro step one, surgery, family medicine, internal medicine, TCK, cut to the chase, and don't waste our time. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. Really appreciate it. Give the video a like. Really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical, links down below. Find me on Telegram, links to the Telegram group channel down below. Now start the clip. 38-year-old man, two-month history, diminished ability to swallow solids and liquids. Physical exam shows halitosis, which means bad breath. There is no edentulism, fancy word, which means loss of teeth. Barium swallow is shown. He's a non-smoker, drinks one to two beers on weekends. Question wants to know the next best step management. We have a barium swallow here. We'll discuss this as we move through the question. Choice A, 24-hour pH monitoring, wrong fucking answer. This is what you're going to do for a diagnosis of gastroesophageal reflux disease if the patient does not respond to a two-week trial of PPIs, okay? So patient has a classic presentation for GERD. Next best step, 2 e trial of PPIs. If it works, that diagnoses your GERD, it's, it's sufficient. There's one question on one of the 2CK surgery forms where, for whatever reason, H2 blocker is the correct answer, 2 e trial of it, where PPI is not listed. If you're forced to choose between the two, choose the PPI. It's more efficacious. And 24-hour pH monitoring, if we fail the two-week trial, as I just said, all right? Sometimes presentations for GERD can be more difficult. Nocturnal cough, very high yield for GERD, as well as pneumonitis, recurrent aspiration pneumonia. So sometimes 24-hour pH monitor, monitoring is done in more difficult presentations as well. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, esophageal gastroendoscopy, wrong fucking answer. So EGD endoscopy. I'm going to tell you straight up, US similarly wants this. If we have new onset dysphagia in somebody who has a background of GERD or heavy smoking alcohol. So for example, they're going to say dude has 10 year history of GERD, has a three month history of dysphagia to solids. Instantaneous endoscopy is the answer, not barium, anything like that. You're worried about adenocarcinoma similarly, heavy smoking alcohol. You're worried about squamous cell carcinoma with esophagus, instantaneous EGD. Okay. And if they tell you in the last line, give you a big paragraph, last line says, endoscopy is is performed and shows a stricture next best step is just biopsy the stricture not dramatic okay but it's what you assume wants also patients with h pylori over the age of 50 will often get an endoscopy just to look at the stomach rule out any gastric malignancy okay that's an answer on one of the two ck forms in this case wrong fucking answer Choice C, insertion of NG tube, wrong fucking answer. So this is going to be for pediatrics, for diagnosis of tracheosophageal fistula, as well as coanal atresia, part of charge syndrome. So in tracheosophageal fistula, you're going to have blind pouch of the proximal esophagus, insert an NG tube, just hits that blind pouch, okay? Kid will have a coughing up of milk with initial feeding. That's the presentation. Coanal atresia means that the nasal passages are not patent. It'll be a presentation of a baby that turns blue while breastfeeding and then when detaching from the breast becomes pink with crying in this case wrong fucking answer choice d manometry pressure study of the esophagus correct answer this is achalasia which is going to be here our bird's beak appearance and barium and mechanism is going to be increased lower esophageal sphincter tone due to loss of Auerbach myenteric plexus. You have NO secreting neurons there that if they're absent, we have increased tone, okay? So this is going to be, because it's neurogenic, we're gonna have dysphagia solids and liquids straight up pretty much always. That's how neurogenic presents, okay? Whereas cancer is gonna be progression, that word is very important, progression of dysphagia from solids only now to solids and liquids, okay? Progresses from solids only to solids and liquids. Or new onset dysphagia solids only, as I described before, and some of the history of GERD or heavy smoking alcohol. So achalasia, usually idiopathic. Yes, some students will get hysterical. It can, in theory, be due to Chagas disease. I think there might be one question tops and all of step one, 2CK material combined on that, but it's pretty much 19 out of 20 questions, just gonna be idiopathic. and our sequence once again is barium first showing us the bird's beak appearance then we're going to do esophageal manometry which is going to show us increased les tone plus decreased peristalsis of the rest of the esophagus and you can also do a biopsy in theory of the les to show loss of arbok plexus although us simile does not assess that and you can use drugs but they want myotomy 
okay? Balloon dilatation, those are types of answers for treatment. US Assembly also doesn't assess that, okay? So pretty much for the exam, what do you need to know? As I just fucking said, barium first, followed by manometry. That's pretty much all they're really gonna get at for achalasia, okay? Real quick, surgical consultation, wrong fucking answer. We're not hopping into surgery yet, all right? So obviously surgery can be part of the management, but I would say what you could be aware of is they will jump straight to surgical management for esophageal perforation. So if they tell you, for example, an endoscopy was performed, now a patient has uh, abnormal vitals and they tell you a barium shows leakage, or sorry, not barium, gastrographin, water-soluble contrast, shows leakage of contrast into the mediastinum, uh, they will just have surgery boom as the next best step in management. Wrong fucking answer. You know the deal to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe my channel. I appreciate your time. That's it.